Once upon a time here in Lyon, France, there lived two brothers, Guillaume and Gilbert. They were successful blacksmiths. They both had their own workshops and a lot of men working for them. They were in their 40s and they had worked hard since their youth. One day Guillaume said to his brother, have you heard there is a fountain of eternal prosperity on the other side of the land? Those who have found it have never had to work again and their villages have enjoyed riches and anything the earth can offer. I intend to gather my men and go search for it. I'm tired of toiling day in and day out. I want my share of the riches. Gilbert answered, I have and that is what I want too. I have already told my men to pack their items because we'll be leaving next week. Next week, Guillaume and Gilbert left for the other side of the land with their men, both with their own wagon. They had loaded their wagons with tools and supplies, since the trip would be long and filled with obstacles. Guillaume and his men were enthusiastic. They wanted to arrive first and have a lion's share of prosperity. Gilbert as well was determined, and he had prepared to lead his team to the fountain, no matter what. Their wagons went through beautiful sceneries, and they met friendly people and traded with them. But it didn't take long until the going got hard and the first hardship was ahead. The ground was stony, swamp here and there, and filled with chasms. There were wagons stuck here and there, as many others had heard of the fountain of eternal prosperity and decided to find it. Guillaume decided they must build a caterpillar track to their wagon, which will help them pass through the harsh ground. He told his best blacksmiths to guide the men and see that the track will be done within a week. One of the helpers, who went by the name Jacques, told Guillaume that he and his pals might come up with a faster way to equip the wagon with a caterpillar track. Guillaume understood Jacques's good intentions, but didn't believe they could come up with a way faster than that of his blacksmiths. Besides, the operation was in a hurry, and they had no time for trying out uncertain alternatives. Meanwhile, Gilbert gathered his men together and told them the possible solutions he had come up with. They were caterpillar track, bridges over rough spots, and finding another route. He said to his men, these are the possible solutions I could come up with. I know you are competent men and you can solve difficult problems together. Now ponder this situation together and decide what is the best way to proceed. Gilbert's men were having an intense discussion until René, a blacksmith, had an idea with his helpers Robert and Christian. Let's dismantle the wagon into parts and proceed in small groups, carrying the parts through the harsh ground. They got to work immediately and dismantled the wagon into parts so small that a couple of men were enough to carry them. In tough places, one went first to check the next waypoint and gave the others instructions on where to put their foot. They used the largest beams of the wagon as bridges over chasms. After five days, Guillaume and his men had finished building the caterpillar track and they were ready to go. Two days later, they had passed the harsh ground. But Gilbert and his men were already far, because it had taken them four days to pass the harsh ground, but only one day each to dismantling and assembling the wagon. The journey continued in the landscape of the Allier River. Eventually, Guillaume reached Gilbert, because Gilbert and his men had stopped for a day in a village where there was a party. They had been singing, dancing, drinking wine, and eating boar and pheasant. Soon they encountered the next hardship. In front of them there was a huge wall with an iron gateway. The gateway was guarded by a giant rhinoceros, who hardly allowed anyone to pass through it. There was a long line of people attempting to make the rhinoceros let them pass through. 
Guillaume told his men to entertain the rhinoceros with songs and performances. Perhaps that could make the rhinoceros let them pass through the gateway. Jacques, the helper, suggested to Guillaume that they could try to bribe the rhinoceros. Guillaume stated that they only had tools and supplies, which probably would be of no interest to the rhinoceros, and besides, they needed them themselves. Jacques tried to explain that he has gold, but Guillaume didn't believe and told him to go back and entertain the rhinoceros. As for Gilbert, he asked his men for ideas as to how they could get the rhinoceros let them pass through the gateway. Robert the helper said he has gold that they could use to bribe the rhinoceros. But the gold was packed so tightly that he couldn't unwrap it on his own. Then some other helpers and blacksmiths also revealed that they have gold, but they cannot unwrap it on their own. Gilbert made the men unwrap the packages together. They gathered their gold and gave it to the rhinoceros, who let them pass through the gateway. Guillaume and his men continued to entertain the rhinoceros, who only late in the evening was in a good enough mood to allow them to pass through to the other side of the wall. Guillaume commanded his men to hurry up as much as they could. Finally, they reached Gilbert's wagon. However, the worst of all hardships was ahead of them. Both Guillaume and Gilbert had treaded on the land of the most cautious tribe in the land, the Prudents. They were driven away back to where they came from, and they weren't able to explain they were friendly, because they didn't speak the Prudents' language. Guillaume pondered how they could make the Prudents let them pass through their land. First, he decided to try doing them favors. After all, they were professional blacksmiths. They went to show their tools to them. But the Prudents found Guillaume and his men intimidating and drove them away. Guillaume thought that maybe the Prudents didn't recognize their tools and misunderstood their intentions. He told his men to make horseshoes, cooking utensils and chain. They tried to give them to the Prudents as presents. But the Prudents already had recognized Guillaume's men as intimidating intruders and refused to accept their presence. Next, Guillaume and his men attempted to pass the Prudents' land at night, just quietly. However, the Prudents were cautious by nature and they didn't leave their land unguarded for a moment. They observed Guillaume's wagon and drove them away back to where they came from already for the fourth time. The situation started to seem hopeless for Guillaume, so he took his men and started searching for an alternative route that would bypass the Prudent's enormous land. In the meantime, Gilbert was having a negotiation with his men over how to befriend the Prudent's. Gilbert asked his men if any of them knew how to speak the Prudent's language. René, the blacksmith, said he spoke some Freelo, which is related to the Prudent's language. Christian, a helper, had learned some Krantiv as a child, which also is close to the Prudence language. One of the helpers spoke a language that no one else in the group understood. He spoke only a few words in French and they used to use gestures to communicate with him. Gilbert encouraged them to speak with each other in these languages. Who knows if they could learn to understand the Prudence language that way. Two weeks they were still spending all of their time just speaking in these languages, trying to learn to understand each other. A young and curious prudent had gone for a ride and ended up exactly where Gilbert and his men were. When he heard them speak the inner language that had slowly emerged, he understood what they said and approached them. He greeted them in his own language and Gilbert's men understood him. They became friends and the young prudent promised to present them to his tribe. Gilbert and his men followed their new friend and they met the chieftains of the prudents. They were able to communicate and Gilbert explained they are friendly and only want to go to the other side of the land. The prudents realized there had been no reason to be afraid and they arranged a dinner party for their new friends. As the evening fell, 
Gilbe and his men continued their journey, passing through the Prudence land, heading towards Normandy. After a week's travel, a wondrous sight awaited them. The fountain of eternal prosperity welled in front of their eyes, vibrant and colorful. Gilbert and his men drank from the fountain, and the water tasted of apples, pears, cherries, and rare fruits they had never tasted before. Guillaume never found the fountain. He gave up and returned to Lyon with his men. When Gilbert and his men returned to Lyon, they had become very wealthy. They lived in glorious castles, they ate well every day, and they organized great parties to the citizens. They had churches and schools built, and they arranged work for many residents of Lyon. Guillaume said to his brother, Congratulations, you found the fountain of eternal prosperity. How did you manage to overcome all the hardships? Gilbert replied, I believed in my men. A dozen of heads are always better than one. We were able to make friends with the prudents because we learned to listen to them and understand them. Brother, you have always been good at taking care of what's yours, so will you be my treasury controller? Thus you will have your share of the riches. Guillaume accepted the duty with joy, and none of them two ever had to toil again. <laughs>